Good evening and welcome to the public presentation for the Markham Square uh, Street Project. Uh, joining us tonight is uh, representatives from the SWA group for consultants for the city of Conway uh, working with us. Uh, we are very excited to Good have evening. SWA. Welcome to the public presentation for the Markham Square uh, Street Project. Uh, what is it? What is it doing? Joining us tonight is uh, representatives from the SWA group oh. for consultants for the city of Conway uh, working all right. Apologize for that. Didn't realize I had that that uh, link up on my computer. Uh, but the uh, SWA Group is an international firm uh, who's renowned for their work across the across the globe. Uh, but we're also excited that uh, in in getting this type of national experience and regional experience across the area, uh, that they also have a local touch in the work that they do. Um, one of the primary consultants on the job is Leah Hales, and she has a local connection, which she can explain later. Uh, so we're very, very excited about that, that it's sort of a blend of this broad, uh, vast experience that also has a local touch to it. Uh, the presentation tonight, uh, we'll be going through, they'll walk through the presentation, uh, explaining the design of the, the park and the square. Uh, we'll have a brief Q&A following, uh, following the presentation. Uh, if you'd like to submit a chat or a question, during the presentation, you can do that via the YouTube chat feature uh, that you'll see on, on YouTube. Uh, I'll be monitoring that for the questions. Um, I'll also have a brief list of, of questions that we already know are questions in advance. Uh, after that, the city will be entering a 30-day comment process. Uh, you can submit comments on the design uh, via the city's uh, website, uh, and that will also be available via other means. So thank you and welcome, and I'll turn it over to Leah now. Hey, welcome everyone. It's too bad we aren't in person. I wish that we were. Um, it's been a while since I've seen all of you. I know we did have a public meeting with each of you back in February. Um, and for those of you that came, I wish that we were there again tonight, but we're not. Um, I do want to tell you that I am from Arkansas. I grew up just outside of Little Rock, um, went to high school in Bryant. I do have a lot of family in the Conway area as well. One of my colleagues, Hank Thomas, also grew up in the Arkansas area. We both graduated from the U of A. Um, Gavin Smith, our civil engineer, is um, in the Fayetteville area, and he also is a graduate from the U of A, as well as Carl Smith, who is one of our faculty advisors on this project as well, is a um, consultant from the U of A. So I'm going to share my screen and get this going. I'll uh, see, James, you need to allow me to share. You should be able to do that now. Okay. Thank you. All right, so hopefully most of you can see here um, our introduction here to Markham Square. You know, back in February when we all met, um, we had a series, we had a presentation that we showed you um, of some concepts of lid ideas, um, activities within a park, recreation opportunities, um, amenities, green infrastructure, et cetera. And we listened to you hopefully and got, gained all of your ideas and put those into our park design. So we took all of the things that you had highlighted that you liked the looks of um, and tried to incorporate that into your future park. We also had a design sketch exercise with each of you where you provided ideas of how water might transverse through the site, um, how pathway systems might work over waterways, uh, where honorariums might be for some of the wonderful people within your community that you want to continue to honor um, through their legacy. And here are some additional sketches and we kind of studied each of these how water might migrate through plant materials, um, contour flows into an overflow, etc. So we kind of incorporated many of these ideas into our park design. 
And this is um, the plan view of the park that we've developed. Um, as you can see here, we've got lots of tree coverage. We have our bioswell feature, our entry plaza play, and amphitheater area. And I'm gonna walk through each element of this design with you. But our objective here was to really create a community-driven public space that is aesthetically pleasing, responsible, and equitable. Four fundamental strategies of this park design was to recognize the relationship between aesthetics and ecology. We want to give you something beautiful, but we also really want to give you something that performs and meets your needs with the stormwater. Um, we want to create an aesthetics first park. So even though there's lots of elements that are performing, you know, in the landscape, this park is really for people, for the community. We're going to incorporate the community values, and we hope that we've done that with the ideas that you presented us at the public, the first public meeting. And we want to celebrate the potential of those low impact development techniques. And we're going to show you how we did all of that within this park and the performance within the park. So the key design elements that I want to share with you are remembrance, sustainability, play, perform, and relax. And so we've incorporated those key design features within this park. And first I wanted to go through and kind of show you the park as what it would look like with the trees peeled back so you can really start to see the ground plane and understand it. As many of you know, the Markham Street project here that's going on currently is developing a bike lane system that runs up each side of Markham Street. It has some on-street parking, new street trees, some bioswells, um, and new sidewalks that kind of go adjacent to the bike lane. What we really wanted to do was as we created our entrance into the park was to pull that walkway away a little bit more, have people kind of forced in through the park and experience the park, and then um, connect back up to, to Markham Street headed north on the sidewalk. The other areas as you move across here, there's an opportunity here for an educational overlook that might start to explain some of the water quality features. If you come around the top side, this is our embankment and inflow of the stormwater as it leaves the pipe system. We move on across the north property line, you enter into this plaza zone, then back out through our public play space for kids here, then back around and back through to the entry. If you complete the loop, it's a quarter of a mile, almost exactly. So four times around, you'll get your walk-in for the day. So the first area that I want us to talk about is the entry plaza. And here you can see we've got our entry feature. We've got a, a monumental sign here. This is where we want to do that remembrance sign. The thing that where all of you talked about uh, both Martin Luther King Jr. and honoring him, but also honoring people within the community themselves. So we're showcasing this piece with a gabion wall system that would be vegetated. We have an overlook deck here which overlooks our, our stream bed. We've got our canopy tree and some flexible seating. And here's a concept rendering of what that might look like. So as we chose some quotes for this project, um, all of the graphics and everything will be inclusive to whatever is determined between the community and the city as to what they would like to show. We showed some ideas here, but nothing is set in stone per se. But the quote we chose is, the time is always right to do what is right by Martin Luther King Jr. And just an entry into Markham Square. Here's that Gab Gabion vegetated wall um, that's supporting the sign and kind of an idea of overlook that you might see here. And here's the, the deck overlook itself. And looking out into the park and across the way, you can see where we have our amphitheater, our play area over here, our um, bioswell feature areas. 
Flexible seating, which is really key in a park. Um, people should be able to pull into the shade when it's, when it's uh, hot out and into the sun when it's cool. And here's a section going through this to kind of help you understand what these features might be. The entry sign, the decking, the big canopy tree. Underneath our cantilever deck is where our main infrastructure happens for our overflow feature for the water. We also have our base flow through the center line here and then our green space on beyond. And here's some concept imagery of what those elements may or may not look like is just to give you an idea. So our next feature is our bioswell. This is where we really get into a lot of the lid aspects of the park. So here we have, as we mentioned before, our storm outflow area. This area is our base, bioswell base flow. And the way this works is it's sloping at a very, very shallow percentage, maybe 1%, one and a half percent, something like that. But the intention is, is that water moves slowly so that particles can fall out of the water, that plants can do it, absorb some of the um, minerals and harsh chemicals that are in the water and help all of these things kind of move slowly, percolate back through the soil instead of flowing downstream. So this is a key component to slowing water down as it moves through. We also have several rain gardens in the park itself along this edge that will overflow, be an area of education, that type of thing. Um, our vegetated gabion walls happen here and here. Um, we also have, and this is where our overflow is to the storm. Here's what a few of those key elements look like. You know, the rain garden here, the vegetated gabion wall. Ours won't be tall. It would probably only be a couple of feet high. And then our bioswell. And a section coming through here, just to show you, you know, this is sort of your base flow, which is the thing that's happening on a daily basis. Uh, maybe there's a perforated pipe in here, but all of these things, this is just your base water flow through the park. Then on a flooding occasion, you, this rain garden here may fill up and hold water longer than other areas of the site. It's kind of a low depression point. And then we have our overlook area. This is a point in which we might have an educational signage and graphic kind of explaining what the rain garden is doing and how the bioswell works and what water quality is and why it's important. And then we have our, some of our buffer gardens here with some native plantings, an additional overflow rain garden, and then our bike path along the street. And here's a rendering of what this could potentially look like, um, kind of looking back towards the entry into the park. You can see the walkways here, the, the lawn area on the sides, but this would really be full of flowering, uh, native plant materials, some rock work, and really start to create habitat in, within this space. And here's another view. So you can see this vegetated wall that happens underneath the cantilever deck as well, and our storm overflow pipe system native grasses, and then lots and lots of play area for people to walk, stroll, run, you know, throw the ball around, whatever they like to do. And so our next area is play. And some people wanted a playground, some people didn't want a playground. We've incorporated a playground and I'm sure it will um, be determined over time what actually gets put in. But here we incorporated another quote that we thought was really powerful and moving for this space. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving by Martin Luther King Jr. I felt that was such a great quote for this space, you know, and all about just moving forward and um, continuing to just do the very best that you can throughout your life. So in here, we've got some play structures, we've got our embankment slides, which many people liked in the concept imagery. We have some table games, picnic tables under some existing shade trees, 
And then we've got our water discovery and water play area for kids. And here's a few concept images. These are some that we used in our initial presentation um, to help explain what these concepts might look like. And people tended to gravitate towards those. And here's a conceptual rendering of the space. This water play area would be controlled water system that would be recirculating um, for kids to play in, would not be stagnant water or anything like that. And then the play area, you know, very simple play structures, very traditional with your seesaws and your um, little bars, whatever those are called, <laughs> balance beams. Uh, ping pong tables, embankment slides, etc. Just some really fun but simple things that you could see in a park. Um, our performance area. So this is our amphitheater zone here. This was an area that had this beautiful existing tree in it. We really wanted to capture that within our shaded seating zone. So what we've created here is an upper terrace that is made of uh, decomposed granite and recycled uh, concrete slabs. So very sustainable way of reuse of materials. Um, plus it's, um, you have really high percolation rates through the decomposed granite. We've got a series of stone slab benches that sit underneath um, the trees, both the existing tree canopy and some additional trees that we would be adding to the site. We have an Arkansas Hackett is our retaining wall system that stair steps down into the, the park retention area. So our great lawn here, both for, for play and performance, is also used as part of our water storage system. And here's a concept rendering kind of showing how those walls step down, where you, this existing tree here is up on a hillside so you could have a a performance over here and people could be seated out here along these retaining walls and up on the benches. And then some concept rendering of the shaded seating areas, you know, the very simple, easy to maintain um, Hackett's, Arkansas Hackett stone benches up here, our decomposed granite um, plaza space and our concrete, uh, reused concrete slabs. And this is a view you can see way over there, the entry into Markham Square with the overlook deck. So with our great lawn also comes, um, you know, great play space. And this is also a great space for retention. And this is really an area where you could do so many things. It's very multifunctional. You have, you know, your play and performance area. You have your floodable lawn area. You've got some buffer gardens and native wildflower areas. But, you know, a big lawn area has so many opportunities for children to run and play, play sports, you know, play um, catch with their dad and do all many, many types of things. And we just see this as a super flexible space. You could host events out here. You could do all sorts of um, activities. Even just strolling through the gardens, you know, just kind of getting a look as to what flowers might be growing in the bioswell areas. And of course, um, with the park comes the floodable, um, ability of the park. So I wanna kind of show you a little clip on how we see this working. Hopefully it's working. Oh, hang on, that didn't work, I'm gonna back up. <laughs> This worked great before I started. Well, we'll try again in a minute. Oops. 
don't know if it's not filling up because we're on Zoom or what, but we was working on our earlier, but we'll get back to this, but we'll, we'll go on. So the area that floods throughout this is this entire site here. You can see that basically at elevation 315 is our floodable contour line all the way around the park. And you, that's really one of the great sustainable aspects of the park is that we are able to kind of hold and maintain so much water within it um, in order to have these great low impact development techniques that I wanna quickly walk through with you. So we've got several in within this park that are part of the grant that we are incorporating. One is the permeable hardscapes, the vegetated living walls, the bioremediation systems, evapotranspiration, rain gardens, stormwater detention, and the water treatment train. So for permeable hardscapes, we have several areas. So the important thing about permeable hardscape is it allows water, storm water, to percolate through, um, through direct infiltration. We have this through our decomposed granite here, our wood bark mulch in the play zone here, and then our wood deck above. In a traditional um, uh, urban infrastructure and hardscape setting, these could potentially be concrete or um, other stone or other materials that don't allow water to percolate through. So it's really important that that happens. Um, the vegetated walls, as I mentioned before, we've got kind of three areas of these vegetated um, gabion wall systems. These help to improve the microclimate by softening something that might otherwise be a hard structural element like a concrete wall. Um, they also abate in the percolation of stormwater. Our bioremediation system. We've talked a good bit about this, but this is the cleansing of the stormwater by the passage through the root zones. Um, we slow the stormwater down, encourage the deposition of suspended solids and remove pollutants um, such as trace metals and organic matters. Evapotranspiration. So this is your tree canopy. This is what it's all about. It contributes to the habitat and the value, the aesthetic values of the site, provides shade and shelter. Um, it filters such things as carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide. So when you're in an urban setting and you've got streets on two sides of you and you're also very close to downtown, you're gonna have lots of vehicular traffic going by. It's really key to have those trees in place to help kind of absorb a lot of those grasses. They also absorb airborne particulates. Um, they provide surface area for evaporation and they reduce the overall urban heat island. So trees, I'm a big proponent. Rain gardens. So like I mentioned previously, we've got several areas of rain gardens here. Um, these create rich plant communities and habitats that you may not otherwise see in an urban area. They stabilize the soil and the embankment sides. Um, they're great educational opportunities. They host lots of wildlife, um, great flowering plant materials, just a really wonderful space. Um, they also remove phosphates and nitrates within the root zones through absorption and filtration. And then the stormwater detention. You know, this is really a visual demonstration. When this floods, it um, basically shows how this urban hydrologic, um, hydrological cycle works. Um, it, detain, it deals with on-site water, provides some detention for um, larger storm events, but it also is controlling the release of water downstream. So really slowing things down, allowing it to percolate as much as possible before it moves into the downstream area. So it not only helps locally, but it has a role in the broader function of the watershed. And the water treatment train. So this is really about source control, treating the water where it falls and then retaining the water in, on the site and, and through site conveyance and then a controlled release down, uh, downstream through the watershed. So this is you know, really the key to how we're moving water and controlling it through the site and cleaning it, all important things. 
And so that is your Markham Street project right there. And we are willing to take any questions you might have. James? All right, excellent presentation. Uh, I'm very excited seeing uh, seeing the, everything that you have designed. It, it is a little bit like uh, Christmas morning. <laughs> in a way. Well, good. Um, so we have a few questions that have been asked, and then we've got a, a list that I know are, are questions. And so I'll start uh, with this. Uh, one of the first questions um, that we have uh, has been about the naming of the park and when a determination will be name, made on naming the park. Currently, the project is called Markham Square. Uh, it's also been under consideration to name this in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, the city anticipates that naming of the park will be handled at the time of construction. Uh, so uh, that, that is our sort of where we're at right now currently with that. Uh, another question that we've had is when will the project be complete? Uh, the city anticipates the project will begin in 2021 or 2022. Uh, that will be contingent on the, the city's financial health. Uh, but we do have timelines with the, the 319H grant that we have. Uh, for completion, uh, so we have to do that within three years uh, related to that. An another question is, how is the project being funded? I uh, want to make uh, clear that this is, it's being funded by a 319H grant uh, from the Arkansas Department of Agriculture, uh, Natural Resources Division, and the U.S. Uh, Environmental Protection Agency. So if it were not for those grants, uh, that grant, we uh, certainly wouldn't be able to do this, uh, such a, a stunning park. Uh, and then some questions I have uh, for y'all. What kind of impact uh, do you think we can expect to, the park to have on drainage within the, the downtown? Okay, I can answer, or um, Gavin, if you want to answer either one. Because Gavin might be on mute. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm unmuted. Uh, I've got my camera on too, James, if you want to turn it on. I can join everybody in the cyberspace there. Um, yeah, I, I think me and Lee would probably say the same thing that um, we feel like we're going to have a positive um, effect on some water levels downtown up to about the five year storm. And uh, that's kind of reflected in the FTN study that the city um, procured before this. And um, our, that's what our modeling is showing right now. Yeah, and as much as we would like to do for the downtown flooding, um, you know, the, our park is limited in size and capacity. So there's really only so much that we can hold in regards to volume of water um, without just creating a huge detention pond, which no one really wants. This is about an important park space for the community, but also about helping to control some of the flooding towards downtown. Is, is another component of that dealing with uh, water quality improvement? Yes. So, um, you know, water is one of our most valuable public resources, and it's really the foundation for our life. And, you know, we, as cities and as citizens, we use it for drinking and recreation and wildlife habitat. So protecting our water resources also protects our human health. Um, the ecosystem and our economy, because the more that um, our water quality declines, uh, the more resources that will, will be needed to restore it to acceptable condition, which in turn costs taxpayers money. So treating the water quality is highly important part of this project. And what kind of uh, impacts will this have on, on say, downstream with uh, Stone Dam Creek or, you know, eventually Lake Conway? So um, this is, uh, you know, tributary to Stone Dam Creek, the park area is, but it's also a pretty small percentage of the total drainage area. So we feel like we are really um, hitting a high note with total water treatment of about 99% of the water that's going to leave the site. There, you know, Conway probably has a large awareness of all the big storms that come through, but in hydrology, surface hydrology, water issues, it's often this overwhelming amount of smaller storms that are happening all the time that add up to a larger effect than the big storms that come through. So when, when you treat the one year storm, you're usually hitting 
and treating the 99th percentile of all the rainstorms that happen in town. And over a hundred years, that's the overwhelming majority of all the water going through. So we feel like with the design we've got, we're, we're meeting the baseline, which is what the, the area would be doing in a pre-development, perfect forested condition, and maybe even exceeding that a little bit for those smaller storms with all these um, well thought out uh, infrastructure, green infrastructure pieces in the project. So, so we're having the greatest effect that we can have for the watershed with the part of the watershed we control with this park. So I guess it, it being a small part, this is sort of like a, a you would say a down payment on uh, addressing any issues that we have going further downstream. Yeah, it, forging a link in a chain that Conway is building year by year, this is a really nice link. All right, well, great. Um, you touched briefly on, on public input in the process and uh, the meeting that we've had thus far uh, prior the sort of the design meeting. Um, can you touch a little bit more about some of the ways that that input translated into uh, sort of the design uh, that you all have come up with? Sure. So as we mentioned, um, we did have a public work session back in February. Uh, there was a presentation on explaining low impact development and what these concepts look like. Um, with the image boards, we really collected a lot of positive feedback from the community. Um, and Carl was so wonderful to help assist the community with doing a design exercise with them to really have the community express what was important to them to go into the park. So the memorials, the naming for um, the citizens within the community, you know, the people that they felt um, were important to them and those elements, you know, I remember this one wonderful woman, she said, I just wanna be able to walk through the park, sit down and read my book and have this beautiful space to be in. And we hope that that's what we've created for them. Carl, do you have anything you wanna add? Um, I, I would just say that, uh, there were some very, very helpful comments that came out of the uh, February meeting. Um, on several occasions, uh, the participants spoke about the importance of uh, what we might call uh, multifunctional design, uh, design that does several things all at one time. Um, and that really helped um, align what we wanted to do with the park, with what was, uh, what was required by uh, the community. I'd also say that, you know, the, the exercise that we undertook, I, I hope will be inspiration for other communities as well. Um, Leah and the rest of the team know that I, I, uh, I actually uh, exhibited the work um, as part of a, um, a lecture on, on uh, I guess, best practice uh, for a South American audience and 8,000 people attended that lecture which is one of, one of the few benefits of the online uh, remote way of communicating that, that we have right now. So throughout the continent of South America, there are now communities wanting to reach out to designers and developers and express their ideas through drawing and, and conversation in the same way that we have uh, here in Conway. So I'm very excited about that. As, as a participant at that, that meeting, I, I want to compliment you all. It was, did, did a great job on it. And uh, it was not only, I think, good at elucidating a lot of uh, input, but it was also uh, a lot of fun for the participants as well. So yeah, we had a great time as well. Um, how would you describe the primary function of the square as a public space and, and park? Well, the primary function of the park is just to create a great public space for the community and the citizens of that community. Um, while we're implementing the best practices of the low impact development and working with the water quality and the watershed issues. But I would say that the primary function of the space is really a multi-purpose event space or everyday use space for the citizens um, within Conway and that particular community. Great. Um, 
can you explain a little bit about how um, how and why the plants, uh, sort of the plants that you're using for the project, how those were chosen? Sure. Well, I will tell you specific plants have not yet been chosen. That will be something that happens a little bit further down the road in our construction document sets. Um, but the plants will include a variety of native species um, that retain and, and infiltrate more water, um, decrease soil compaction, and filter out pollutants. You know, the, these plants require less mowing, less maintenance, no fertilizers, no pesticides, all of those things that lead to overall lower maintenance costs. Um, but they also provide great habitats for pollinators and birds and protect against um, the biodiversity of a space. So it's really key um, that we just do select the correct plants. It's not going to be probably things that you're going to see at Home Depot or anything like that. These are going to be, you know, really native Arkansas plants, which are great because Arkansas has a wonderful palette of native plants. And so we're really fortunate to get to use those. Great. It's it's great to hear that uh, a part of the natural environment in the natural state will be a part of our, our park. Absolutely. Um, one of the questions we had that, that came in via in our YouTube chat, uh, are there going to be any drinking fountains as part of the part of the project? Yes, we typically always include drinking fountains and dog fountains within our um, park work system. Great. Uh, and then one of the questions we had uh, is, uh, I don't know that y'all will necessarily be able to answer that, that we'll have to answer as a city, is uh, will the park space be able to be rented or reserved? Um, more than likely with all our, our spaces, we're able to do that. Uh, certainly it will be open. We, we're creating this for the use as a, as a public space. Uh, so I can't think of a better use than for the public to be able to use it. Uh, so that's certainly something that we, uh, look forward to have things like Easter egg hunts and, and whatnot for, for local churches and different groups. So Good. Uh, it was a great question. What well, is there anything else that, that uh, you feel like we need to know or, or share uh, with us uh, regarding this? Well, uh, you know, one, we just want to thank all of you for the opportunity to do this park. It's really kind of near and dear to my heart to get to do a project so close to home and where I grew up. Um, so that's really fascinating. And we hope that it's something that your community will embrace and that they will start to own and it will just become their space because that's really what this is all about. It's, um, even though we're doing performance-based landscape and sustainability aspects of it, it's really a space for people at the end of the day. It's a space for that community and it's a space for them to be in and be involved in and to use to the, to whichever, uh, however they would like to use it. Do you other guys have anything you wanna add? Well, that's great. Um, other than that, um, I just want to let people know that we are going to be providing a video to the city to post on their YouTube site when they're ready of the presentation. Um, it's it's a more of a video video versus this um, conversational piece, but I'm sure both will be. I'm, I'm not sure how the city will do it, but we have provided that as well for your enjoyment. Well, can one of the a member of the public asked uh, if we'd be able to have a, a PDF of the presentation available to post on the website? Sure, absolutely. All right. Well, great. Well, Mr. G, you can <laughs> you can or Gee, sorry, uh, you can look for that. Um, well, I, I want to thank you so much uh, for um, presenting with us tonight uh, and and sharing about this. This is a very important project for the city. Something that we're particularly very excited about. Uh, it's a uh, a very unique project for Conway. We've never had a, a type of a public space like this. And so I think it's really going to be something that is uh, spectacular and very, very different. Uh, so it'd be great for the community. Um, I wanna let everyone know that uh, we will be heading into a 30 day comment period uh, for this. This video will be available going forward uh, via our YouTube stream. And we'll also have a, a public comment uh, section on our website where you'll be able to uh, provide comments. Those will come come to us. Uh, if we need to have some uh, a follow-up meeting where we talk about and answer some additional questions, we'll be able to do that. 
but again, we, we thank you so much uh, for watching this and being a part of this process. Uh, it's very, very important for us as a community to, to hear what you all as, as our residents, our stakeholders uh, want, and we very much appreciate you being part of it. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night.